Good morning, Year 6, and welcome to today's writing lesson, which is our first lesson uh, after the half-term holiday. Um, and I hope you had a really great holiday and you're nice and rested and ready to get back into uh, some home learning today. Um, this is a new unit of writing we're starting, and it's um, a writing to inform unit, uh, because what we're going to be doing is we're going to be writing what's called a non-chronological report. Now, non-chronological reports are basically information texts um, that are designed to give readers information. They're a non-fiction text. And what we're going to be doing in this uh, learning journey is we're going to be uh, writing about planets, um, so to do with space. So we're going to write um, an information text, or we're going to look at an information text all about Mars, our waggle. Uh, and then we're going to sort of practice our skills and learn how to write non chronological reports, write information text by writing um, one about Earth. OK, uh, and I'll take you through that over the next three or four lessons. And then once you've got all your skills for writing non chronological report, what we're going to do is we're going to write an information text, a non chronological report, all about a mystery planet. Um, complete with pictures and diagrams and uh, create a, an end product that we can be really proud of. Uh, and the mystery planet's like a fictional planet from a movie uh, that I think you'll really, really enjoy. OK, so just to recap, um, we're going to look at a waggle all about the planet Mars. Then we're going to practice our skills uh, and learn how to write non chronological reports by writing about the planet Earth, using the waggle of Mars as our stimulus as to it to uh, to help us with writing it. And then finally, once we've learned how to write an on-cross report, you guys are going to write your own one all about this mystery planet at the end. OK, and so I think you'll really like this unit. At the end of last year, they produced some amazing non cronic reports um, that they're really, really proud of. So to start off with, what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, read you the waggle, which is to do with the planet Mars. Um, and as I'm reading it, what I want you to do is to think about what the author is trying to achieve in this text. Now, it's a little bit small on screen, um, so if you need to, uh, you can have a look and read the, the one I put in Teams, which might be a little bit bigger, or you can load up a little bit bigger. But if you can see it, uh, you can follow it on here. But I'm going to read it to you now. So this is a non chronological report all about the planet Mars. Planet Mars, our next door neighbour. Mars, named after the Roman god of war, is located within our solar system. It is the fourth planet from the sun and our very own next door neighbour. We are the third planet from the sun. Mars is approximately half the size of planet Earth and is tiny in comparison to large planets such as Jupiter and Saturn. In terms of distance from the sun, Mars is approximately 140 million miles away from the sun. Earth itself is around 93 million miles. Landscape, what is it like? Mars itself is a cold, inhospitable place. Its surface, predominantly sandy rock, is pitted with impact craters. If you could breathe there, you might have fun jumping around the low gravity, but you'd be in danger of being blown away. Huge dust storms with winds reaching speeds of over 100 kilometers an hour, or 62 miles per hour, occasionally blow across the surface. The dust can often take months to settle down again. Although the low gravity might help you as you make your way across the rocky desert-like terrain, you won't survive the cold, at least not for most of the year. In the summer, the temperature on Mars' equator can rise to a habitable 30 degrees or 86 degrees Fahrenheit. Most of the time, however, it's much, much lower. In fact, quite incredibly in the winter, the temperature can fall as low as minus 63 degrees centigrade or minus 81 degrees Fahrenheit at the polar ice caps. The wide range in temperature is caused in part by the thin atmosphere, which retains little heat. Why is it red? Mars differs from other planets within the solar system as it appears red from other space. Mars is red because it is covered in a layer of iron-rich dust. The rusty red colour of the planet is caused by just that, iron oxide, also known as rust. Dust in the atmosphere causes Mars to have red skies. Special places. Were it possible to breathe on Mars, there are some specific landmarks you may wish to visit. Polar ice caps. Mars' polar ice caps are made of frozen carbon dioxide, which turns to gas in the summer. When this happens, large gazes of carbon dioxide and dust erupt from the surface. Don't forget your camera. Olympus Mons. Be sure to visit Tharsitz, the volcanic plateau in the planet's western hemisphere. Here you will find three huge volcanoes, including the Olympic Mons. The biggest volcano in the solar system, it's almost, it's the biggest of volcano in, in the solar system. It's almost as tall as three Mount Everest. Valles Marineris. If you like hiking and think that the Grand Canyon is a bit too crowded, then why not visit the Valles Marineris? Their system of canyons is over 4,000 kilometres. That's 2,500 miles long. 
So the question there was, what is the author trying to achieve in this text? Um, I'll let you pause the video for a second, have a think to yourself. Um, so hopefully you've done that. So what's the author trying to achieve? Well, hopefully uh, you've established that the aim of this text is to provide people with information. And in this case, it's about the planet Mars. Um, the text is aimed at adults or young teenagers or even children of your age um, and uses clear and formal language. OK, uh, subpens are used so that people can go directly to the specific information you need. So it's quite formal all the way through. Um, it's aimed at, it's, it's not done in a, a childish manner, but children of our age, year six, year five, uh, we could access this text and read it and we would learn about Mars, as could teenagers, as could adults. OK, um, so the subheadings, what they're designed to do is means that if you don't want to read all of the text, you can go to specific sections. So if you want to find out why it was read, you can see that in the subheading and you can go there. The bullet points help as well because they uh, show you, you can see the different special places, which ones am I interested in? So that's the idea behind the information text. That's what it's designed to do. Um, another feature of information text is they use lots of what we call technical vocabulary. And what you'll do in this unit is when you write about Earth and also when we write about this fictional planet, you'll use lots of technical vocabulary. So it says here, within an information text, an author will often use technical words specific to the topic they're talking about. In this case, scientific words or geographical words. So a little mini task for you is to either look on screen uh, or, or highlight on a sheet. Maybe you've got printed out. Uh, I want you to scan through the text and highlight words or phrases that you think are technical, so scientific or geographical phrases that link directly to um, this, this, te this text. Uh, and this part of this is taking on the role of being a scientist. If you want to write a really, really good, it says GD there, a real great depth piece of writing, non crunch report, you have to sound like a scientist, you have to sound like the expert. So have a scan through and see if you can find any phrases that you think are specifically technical, such as scientific or ge geographical phrases. Pause the video, have a go. OK, hopefully you've had a go at that. So um, I did the same. I had a look through um, to see if I could find any geographical phrases. Well, even just approximately half the size of planet Earth, uh, that sort of a phrase linked to the size of it. Um, if you go a bit further down, it actually mentions uh, its surface, predominantly sandy rock, is pitted with impact craters. Uh, that's a very geographical phrase, isn't it? Um, low gravity, linking to science there. Um, there's lots, lots more as you go through. The temperature on Mars equator can rise to a habitable 30 degrees. So that's factual information, that's scientific factual information. Um, thin atmosphere, the solar system, uh, covered in a layer of iron-rich dust, um, iron oxide, uh, and so on and so forth. Frozen carbon dioxide, large geysers of carbon dioxide and dust that erupt from the surface. Um, the volcanic plateau, Western Hemisphere. There's lots of phrases uh, and vocabulary in there that are geographical or scientific, and that gives it its really um, effective formal tone. So there's another feature of information text for you. The other thing that we like to look for in it is precise punctuation. And at year six level, we can use lots of precise punctuation to enhance our writing. So this is another feature of this text is a mature and controlled use of punctuation. Punctuation is used to enhance the quality of writing. So another mini task for you now um, is to scan through and highlight sentences that use advanced punctuation. So just have a look through. Can you see any uh, use of advanced punctuation? Maybe it's used semicolons or brackets uh, and how have they been used? OK, hopefully you've had a go at that. What you can see early on, uh, the punctuation, this is very accurate from all, all the way through. And again, I say it's a very greater depth skill, is that control of punctuation. Uh, we've got a parenthesis straight away, parenthesis with commas here, Mars, and sort of named after the Roman god of war, so that could be in brackets, so couldn't it? Uh, it's that extra information. Uh, so that's commas with parenthesis, semicolon as well. Um, it gives you a bit more detail. So it says it's located in our system, solar system. And it gives you a second clause that says it is the fourth planet from the sun and our very own next door neighbour. Um, so it's adding detail to that. And then brackets are used quite effectively all the way through to add extra information. We are the third bracket from the third planet from the sun. 
um, Earth itself is around 93 million miles. So brackets you will use quite a lot in this piece to add information for the reader. Uh, there's lots of examples of bracket use here when it's talking about the speeds, it gives it in kilometers an hour, and then it also gives it for the reader in um, miles per hour. Down here, it does the temperature in degrees Celsius, and then it also does the temperature in degrees Fahrenheit. So there's lots of examples of um, accurate punctuation use. A colon there to give more detail. Uh, the rusty red colour of the planet is caused by just that, iron oxide, also known as rust. So that gives more detail to that clause there. Um, and so on. Uh, bullet points have been used effectively, dashes to introduce each point with the bullet points. Um, all the way through, we've got even got hyphenated words, iron rich. So the use of punctuation is very accurate. There's also, if you notice here, when they use the brackets on this one, so it says uh, here you will find three huge volcanoes, the big, uh, including the Olympic ones, the biggest volcano in the solar system. And here it used brackets to talk to the, real, to the reader directly. It's almost as tall as three Mount Everest. And an exclamation mark is used uh, to make to show how amazing that sounds, as well as here where it's used question mark. What is it like? OK. So. We've looked at the features of an information text of a non-chronological report, and here, on the side here, are all the different features that we'll look to use as we get to our final piece. Um, so, we, so basically, they, they, they've used the design to provide information, they should have a mature and formal tone, they should use technical vocabulary, and they should have controlled use of that. Uh, punctuation and all of that is included in our key success that we'll come back to at the end of our unit and we'll go into that as we go through the unit but what I want to do today is have a look at how we write the opening to a non chronological report and it says here over the next few lessons we're going to look at what we write at how we write information text and how we can provide information to our reader in a formal controlled manner today we're going to look at how to write a sensible introductory paragraph so here's our waggle example to do with Mars. And I've broken it down into different sections for you. It says, our next door neighbour, that's the subheading. Mars, named after the Roman god of war, is located within our solar system. It is fourth planet from the sun and our very own next door neighbour. We are the third planet from the sun. Mars is approximately half the size of planet Earth and is tiny in comparison to larger planets such as Jupiter and Saturn. In terms of size, Mars is approximately 140 million miles away from the sun. Earth itself is around 93 million miles. So what that's done there, that piece, uh, the intention of the author here, what they're trying to do, is they're trying to introduce you to the topic, which is to do with the planet Mars, and they're going to introduce the planet to us by telling us where it is and its size, or its distance from the sun. Uh, the key success used in specifically in this opening is, we've got commas from parentheses at the start there, Mars, named after Rome, got a war is located within our solar system. Could have just said Mars is located within our solar system, but it's giving you some added information in commas. A uh, semicolon is used for effect. We've got brackets used for some extra information. Uh, we've got formal language, approximately in comparison to, such as in terms of size. So it sounds like a, an expert is talking about the subject matter. As well as that, we've got factual information. Uh, Earth is around 93 million miles. Um, so again, it sounds like an expert talking, and then some brackets for parentheses again at the end. So those are the features that have been used to create this introductory paragraph. Now, what I'd like you to do today is, again, we're going to practice our skills for writing non chronological reports, all, about, all by writing a non chronological report all about Earth. So what I'd like you to do is write a paragraph about where Earth is and its size, and you can try to use says all or as many of the key success that have been used here. Can you use some of these skills that have been used in this one? Um, to help you, I'll give you some factual information. Uh, so the, the name Earth is derived from the word ground. One interesting fact, Earth is the only planet that wasn't named after a Greek or Roman god or goddess. Earth is the third planet from the sun. Uh, it's relatively small compared to others. Uh, however, it is about twice the size of Mars. And it's around 93 million miles away from the sun. So though that information there tells me where it is and the size of it. And what I need to do is put those into sentences to create an introductory paragraph. Now I've put all of this into the scaffold sheet because that's everything you need. That's what a waggle looks like. Um, there were some of the, the key success that have been used. And here's your task as well as some facts. Now you might have extra facts or you might search on Google for extra facts to make your introduction quite interesting and different from the one that I'm doing on screen. I'll come on to the stretch in a minute. So I'm just going to model to you 
uh, an example of this. So I would start with the title, Planet Earth. Uh, that's my heading, make sure that's underlined. And then I'm going to do a subheading. Uh, and now the one on the waggle said, our next door neighbour. Uh, I'm going to put um, Earth, our planet, because that links to uh, um, our, our planet. That's what it is. All right, so that's my subheading, my introductory paragraph. Now, what I'm going to do is I need to explain... Um, where Earth is and its size and give an introduction to the reader. So I'd look back at my waggle example to use that as an idea. So it talks about it being located in our solar system, fourth planet from the sun, very own next door neighbour. And I could use that as a bit of a scaffold if I want to, or I can write it in my own way. I've got some key facts here I can use. Again, you can get extra facts off the internet and use those if you've got more information. But I'm going to write this. Earth. Now I'm going to use brackets for emphasis. Earth, our very own habitable planet. There you go, some uh, technical language there. Uh, habitable planet uh, is located within our own solar system. Now I'm going to use a semicolon like it does on the first line of this one uh, to add some more information. Uh, and I know it is the third, it is the third planet from our, uh, from the sun and neighbours, actually I'm going to change that, third planet from the sun, neighbouring Venus, which is the second planet, that's actually a relative clause there, which is the second planet, and Mars, which is the third planet. So I'm just going to check that back. Earth, our very own habitable planet, is located within our solar system. It's the third planet, the Sun, neighbouring Venus, which is the second planet, and Mars, which is the third planet. I'm actually going to do dashed parenthesis there. So I've got a good variety of punctuation. Okay. Um, despite being only the third planet from the Sun, it is a quite incredible... 93 million miles away from it. Uh, now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use brackets to speak to the reader. That is quite some or quite a long journey. I'm actually going to do that in italics because um, that's me sort of shifting the formality a little bit and going a little bit informal to speak to the reader uh, through brackets. So, despite being only the third parent of the sun, it's a quite incredible 93 miles away from it. That is, I'm not going to say quite again, that is, so, that is uh, truly, um, can I change a little long? Truly lengthy journey, there you go, using synonyms. Um, now I'm going to look back at my information I've got here. Again, I don't want you just to write out this information into sentence. You've got, you've got to put it into your own words, make it sound different to this. I'm just giving you some facts here. It's got to be your own sort of introduction. And again... When you do your one, obviously you'll see my model version. Try and make your one different to mine. Okay, um, but I'm going to talk about the name because I think it's quite interesting. The fact that most planets have the name uh, that comes from a Roman god or goddess, but this one doesn't. So I'm going to say the name itself, Earth. Put that in brackets again. See how many times I use brackets here. The name itself, Earth, is derived from the word. I think the word was ground. I'm put that in a little uh, inverted comma there. Word for ground. Which is interesting because um, I'm going to say, unlike, uh, oh, I'm going to put dash for parenthesis, unlike many other planets, dash, um, Earth is not named after, uh, after a Greek, or sorry, a Roman god or goddess. a Greek or Roman god or goddess. Um, oh, comma, such as Mars. There you go. Um, talking about size, in terms of size, so Earth quite small, really, uh, compared to other planets. I'm going to say Earth is a relatively uh, small planet uh, when compared 
to planets such as Saturn and Jupiter, because we know they're much bigger planets. Um, semicolon. In fact, it is over. In fact, Jupiter. Now, this is a fact I actually found for myself, because if you want to find some extra information, I had to look on Google to find out how much bigger Jupiter is than Earth. And it says uh, it's actually 1,300. In fact, Jupiter is over 1,300 times the size of Earth. Uh, and I'm, I'm going to leave it there, but I'm going to put in one more brackets, dot, dot, dot. And I'm going to speak to the reader in a slightly informal tone here. And I bet you thought Earth was big. So it's sort of like, I bet you thought Earth was big. Actually, Jupiter's 1,300 times bigger. So here, what I've done is, if I look back to my key success, I've introduced the topic here and I've given some introduction, introductory factual information. I've talked about where it is and what size it is. So this first bit talks about Earth. Uh, explains that it's um, third planet from the sun um, and how far away it is from the sun. Um, here I then talk about the fact that it's got a different, um, it's not named after a Roman god or goddess, uh, so there's some, some inf general information for the reader. And then they have to think about the size at the end here. So it's giving me an introduction to my in non-chronological report and through the rest of it I would write more about Earth. What I want you to have a go at doing is have a go at doing your own one. Write your own introductory paragraph all about Earth, and uh, you can use some of this information here. If you've got the, uh, if you can work from home, you can have a look at Google for some more information. Uh, and what I like you to do is a bit of a stretch as well. Is can you apply the skills learnt to write a paragraph about an imagined planet of your own choice? And um, you can make up the name of the planet, the facts, etc. Uh, it could be in a different solar system. You can be imaginative. So once you've done one about Earth, you can actually completely make up a planet and see if you can write an, uh, an introductory paragraph all about this made-up planet. And um, that's just a bit of a stretch activity for some of you. OK, I hope you met, that made made sense for you guys. In terms of what we've done today is we've run through um, what a non conscious report looks like. And we've looked at how you write an introductory paragraph. And we've looked at the Mars version and you guys are going to write one all about Earth. OK, have fun and I'll see you later. Bye.